platform coach. A lot of experimenting, a lot of moving guys around, which is fun when you get your f other five back, you still have room. Will you just talk about all the experimenting and maybe some mad scientist things you get to try when you get this much along of a preseason? Well, uh, I think, number one, we're, we're pleased thus far to be able to have a group that we can move around and the fact that we've had um, all the same guys out there working, you know, um, I think it's the nature of the position, just that uh, you have injuries throughout the season, so um, building continuity throughout the group is a good thing of guys you know, seeing things or communicating things or doing things a little differently um, and doing it with different guys in front of them. And then lastly, um, competition is a good thing. So. Looked like Jermaine got some reps at guard. I'm just curious, did, it, did, it, did you see that correctly? Uh, did he, get, he, he didn't get any reps? Okay. Yeah. I mean, he gets reps at a lot of flat spots, but you know, Not he's that. working hard. Yeah, yeah move yeah. everybody around. So, yeah, Carmen, there is some continuity this year with the offensive line. It feels like the starting unit, for the most part, um, comes back. How much of a um, benefit is that? I think, like we said back in the spring, the, the benefit of having the guys back is that we have an, ex an understanding of what the expectations are as a group and the process, which. You know, having awareness of what's going to happen can, you know, obviously help alleviate some problems or, or, or get over the hump on some certain things. So we definitely enjoy having, you know, a lot of the guys back in the room and the guys that we've added, you know, and fit our mold and we're excited about. How much yeah, we've seen a lot of Thayer uh, uh, getting starting reps at right tackle. I don't know what the depth chart looks like this time of year. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, like we talked about before, there's a bunch of different combinations of guys getting reps at different spots, different groups. I, I don't, we don't say starters, we don't say anything. I mean, it, it's just, it is what it is. You know, whoever's out there, I mean, I know at some point I know it's important for you guys, but truly for us, it's about getting better and guys getting work with different guys. And that's, that is a goal of ours to, to get that because that's the nature of the position and the nature of the season. How much have you seen Thayer mature from year one to year two? I think, like anything, I mean, you know, you, you like to see that you know, improvement in that regard um, just by sheer nature. Um, he's a worker, um, like the other guys in the room. You know, he and Dylan both going into their second year. But then just the, the, the improvement that you've seen with, you know, guys from the spring to now, you know, just having, you know, the two rookies that we have in the room of, of their improvement as well. So, I mean, that's one of my core philosophies as far as, you know, your goal should be constant improvement. Um, I know as a coach, I'm always trying to get myself better, whatever it may be. And I think you expect that as yourself, especially at our position, just because the nature of the position is such a developmental one. You know, it, you never have it, you know. Um, the skill set and the, and, the, and the things that are required to do the position well um, are not natural. So you've got to really work at them and develop them, and it's never, it's never done. Coach, you're talking about formulating the best five. Obviously, it's a mix and match, but what do you look for in the best five? Well, I think by nature, there certain positions have certain traits, you know, tackle to guard, guard to center. Um, but nevertheless, for us, the core philosophy of all of them are still the same, of being smart, being tough, um, being committed to their craft, um, being able to adapt. We do a lot of things, and your expectation is to do all those things well. Um, so, um, and then, of course, there's a communication element to it. Um, certain positions have to uh, give more calls. Certain positions have to maybe give more alerts. You know, so pre-snap, you know, somebody be even making a call. And then, you know, as, as we're getting into the – as the defense is kind of declaring what they're going to do, then a different group has to, you know, maybe make a call. So there's definitely some communication that, that, that you look for and require in that regard. Last year watching Andre, there would be a play, then you'd run up. It seems like this year he's almost quarterbacking a little bit on the offensive line. He's a little bit more comfortable. Am I reading him right? I think I think the, the challenge for Andre, and, and again, you talk about a guy's improving. You know, um, you know, Andre was a starting center of the year before I got there. This is his first year being the full-time starting center, and then I thought we saw a really good improvement. We saw a solid player last year, and and. You expect that. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you're going in your second year. We expect you to get better. Um, you should see that. So, I, you know, that being the case, now going into year three as you know, as, as, as a center, um, primarily position, I think you start to see a little bit more comfortable, you know, being more comfortable. And then I think you see Andre being more comfortable in our system. And our challenge to him was to play faster at the line of scrimmage within our system. Um, and it, it, in our system, we asked the center to do a lot to set the table. Um, as compared to some other just systems within football. And I think you see Andre just being a little bit more comfortable doing that. How difficult is it to transition to a new voice back there in Jimmy from Andre? How many reps do they need? He had mentioned it takes a lot of reps. Yeah, I think I think we're so conditioned 
to the cadences of, of different quarterbacks and yourself, and, and no matter how much there's there's a rhythm to that. So I think if there's any adjustment to that, it's it's literally just hearing a different voice. And me as a coach trying to emulate what, what our quarterbacks are doing because they're hearing me more than anybody. So I've got to make sure my cadence is, is the same, which is why my wife teases me that, you know, oh, I can hear you're in the training camp because my voice is going <laughs> three octaves and, you know, I'm gravelly. What is it about Brandon Parker? I mean, they keep they kept him for a year when he wasn't even playing, and he just he he's a guy that grinds. He's just a guy that produces. Would you talk about him, please? Yeah. Again, I don't always like to talk in generalities, but Brandon is one of those guys that just like the other ones. I mean, he is smart. He he is driven in his craft. Um, he's tough mentally and physically. You know, he I mean, gosh, he got injured. He played through it, and then okay, it really was an injury last year. At that moment, um, it wasn't just being hurt. And then you get into the, you know, I mean, he, he's a good leader in the room. Um, you know, so he's got great character. I mean, these are these are all good things you want, especially at our position. Um, but he's a communicator. He's smart. He cares. He practices his craft. Um, he's aware of what his talents and limitations are. And he tries to maximize the former and, and minimize the latter. It, it, when you look at your offensive line, you've got a lot of good humans, not yeah. just good football players. That has to be valuable when building a unit like an offensive line that's so critical. Would you agree with that? I, I think absolutely. I think your, your culture and, and your character are, I mean, are, are going to affect wins and losses without a doubt. Um, and we've got a, a room full of men that respect one another and work, and they like to work with one another, um, and that helps. You know, I mean, just coming in and work this job, this this business is a grind all of its own. No matter where you're at, whatever a culture is, I mean, the nature of the position itself. I mean, it's I mean, it's I mean, you're designed to be you know in physical contact. It, it, it's tough. So to be in a room that you at least enjoy the people you're around and you can trust the people you're around. Um, I mean, that's a great thing. Yeah. I've heard a story about you that I need to ask, but you went to your guys once. I don't know if you were watching film or what the, 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 the semantics around it were, but you apologized to them. You didn't think you had done a good enough job, and that's rare. Josh does it too, so I commend both of you. But they've talked about how the first time you did that, it, hey, in film sessions, I'm calling anybody out, including Carmen. Yeah, yeah. We, we, that earned their trust. That's and that's the number one word. It, it comes down to trust. If you expect somebody to express, it, you know, if you to get past an issue or a problem, you of course have to recognize its existence and and then okay, how can we improve upon whatever you know to get to move past it? Well, to to, to do that, you have to have a trust factor that you know you express a vulnerability to a group of, of 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 peers and say, you know, I screwed that up. That's that's on me. And, and you know. I, I, I try to do that whether I, you know, drew the wrong card and, you know, there's a young assistant coach that maybe is catching a grief, no, that's on me, or, you know, I tell a player that you know, I, I installed that wrong or I taught it wrong or I saw that wrong, whatever it may be. It, it comes down to that word trust. And if you want to do it and demonstrate it and you want them to demonstrate it back to you, then you have to demonstrate it to them. Who had the biggest impact on Carmen the man? Um, I'd say my mother. Can you can you elaborate on that? Yeah, she's a smart, tough old bird, you know. So, yeah, I would say my mother, you know, like anybody, your family, my brother too, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, extended family, you know, but, but definitely mother and brother on the, on the, on the early in the in the years, and then after that, you had friends and teammates and, and coaches, you know, coaches especially too. I, I want to talk about the other side of you. Still coaching, but away from the field. Yeah, I've heard guys tell you that describe you as you're the offensive line's therapist. <laughs> that some one guy says you're like their preacher, another one says, you know, he's your buddy sitting there having lunch. He's he's a guy you can talk to about your relationships, being a parent, all of that. You can't fake love. Yeah, you can't true. fake. I, you and I have both seen people. I care about you, but then you, no, I don't believe you. Yeah. Your guys believe that from you. Where does that side of your character come from? I think it's a, it's just a human nature to you know, be genuine about it and, and have passion for the people that that you're involved with, and it goes back to the, you know trust and, and, you know, and love. I mean, that's a word. I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that, that gets used and, and, and it's not false I appreciate you saying that um, 
I don't know. I don't know what the source of that is. But I, I think at your core, if someone doesn't know that you care about them as an individual, and how do you do that? You find out about their whole family, and you care about them, and, and you back it up with action. I think how how you achieve that, so it, it is by action. Hey, you're having a bad day, and I really want to hear about it, and, you know, follow up on it. Uh, you know, if something terrible happens in their life, you know, how can I help and, and, and genuinely mean it? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what what the make what the makeup is that that is, but I know it has to be if you want to have trust. With Last year, one of your players, and I'll tell you off camera who it was, but one of your players had made a mistake. And when I talked to him in the locker room, he, he goes, "Man, I really let Carmen down." And I thought that was really unique. He let because he could have said, "I let myself down, let the team down," and he was genuinely emotional that you had let him down. I know that you're a man that respect means a lot because you've earned yours. But you got 15 athletes in that locker room right now who respect you. And when they mess up, they feel like they let you down and it bothers them. Are you able to appreciate the trust these men have put in you? No, I don't think so. I think the we element, you know, we close the door and you talk about admitting fault, hey, we, you know, and, and I think they recognize that in themselves, so then you, know, you don't want to let the group down, um, and you as a coach don't want that to, to, to be the case, and, and, and they don't want to, you know, they don't want to do it for you, so, I mean, I mean, truly, when, anytime, you know, one of the ways I try to demonstrate, when, you know, could you take it, you wear it, you know, when a player's, you know, does something wrong, that's, every time that there's an Emmy or a mistake done by no lineman, and it's me that did it first, and I told them, I expressed that, listen, you know, and then especially if, you know, we had two or three guys screwing something up, you know, that's on me, coach, because it, it is coaching. You know, if one guy screws something up, all right, Tommy will get that better. If a group of guys are screwing up, clearly the coach has screwed that up, and you have to admit that and say, hey, we got to tackle this together and get this right as a group, because otherwise you won't. I mean, you're, you're not going to do it by yourself, especially it's the nature of our position. One of your players told me you made him a better husband. And he talked about, I believe your wife's name is Megan. Yes, correct. And he said, you know, he's constantly reminding us, hey, guys, can't be so football focused that you forget about the most important people at home and that you'll talk about Megan or you'll talk about your daughter. Does it? I know you're not in college or high school, but you weren't, the, you weren't too far away from being there just a few years ago. No doubt. Does that touch you, the man, that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm from a divorced home, I want you guys to prioritize family. I want you guys that you're impacting them more than just as football players, but as men. It's not necessarily my goal, but when you go about it the way I think that you need to do it to develop trust and, and regard for one another in a, in, a, in a relationship that someone's going to believe in what you're seeing, I think that ends up being a byproduct. Of how I go about it is showing my human element to it. So, um, you know, yeah, they hear about my family because that's you know it's 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 my family and my players. After that, you know, they're not seeing anybody else. So, um, you know, I appreciate that, and, and I'm happy that to hear that about you know. It, I marvel having been a longtime college coach. I didn't. I thought there would be more of a, a, a division of you know. Okay, hey, you know, because mm -hmm. in college you see these kids from the time they're 16, 17, you recruit them, you coach them until they're twenty two, and you send them out to the world. I didn't realize when you, you know, I thought with the pros and you got a lot of older men and you know, it's more pure, and it is. It is more pure. There's so much more weeds. They're all vets to a certain extent, but then you don't realize that you still make an impact on their day to day life. And you think about it. We're all trying to improve. I'm forty seven, and I'm trying to be a better husband and a father and, and coach. So. Why not for a player that's in his mid thirties, and you know, if that means you know making them a better, you know, helping make them be a better father or parent, then I think that's awesome. You know, I'm, I'm humbled that somebody would say that. McClendon Curtis, I love that kid. Yeah, strong as an ox. Now you know a lot of guys, no matter what school they come from, let alone UT Chattanooga, yeah. they get the NFL. They still got to get stronger. Yeah. This guy comes in, and he arguably may be, if not, one of your most strongest offensive linemen. Still may be a year away technique-wise, but he's there. He's, he belongs in this league. What are your thoughts when you look at – he's like a piece of clay, man, but he's a there is, quality piece of clay. You're definitely right about it. He's a, he and, and Dalton both are, 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 have embraced our culture. 
and it starts with them being workers. You know, they just put their head down. You know, I work for Dante Scarnecchi, and one of Dante's lines that I've absolutely stolen is, you know, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, especially for rookies. If they see a light, it's the train coming, and they've embraced that and they smile at that because that's the nature of the position. I think, you know, you see guys, and they had success in college, and he's got some traits, obviously. He's here for a reason. But how to apply it and use it, you know, it's the technique element that he's embracing and trying to, you know, improve on because that's that's the challenge. Tom Izzo, the Hall of Fame basketball coach at Michigan State, friend of mine, and he used to always, he always says when your best players are your hardest workers, you know you're going to have a good team. Yeah. Colt Miller's a star. He does it right every day. He's working every day. I watched him the other day go over to one of your players whose body language was almost depressing. Tap him on the butt. Let's go. Get. Does it make your job easier when your best player is a Colton Miller? Yeah, this he he exudes what you want as far as a guy that's a worker and cares and, and is committed to his craft. You know, he he. You said you know he doesn't he doesn't do everything right. He admits that. He recognizes that. He's still the constant improvement. He tries to do it um, within the, the framework of what we're trying to to achieve technique or scheme wise. And and he's a good teammate and a good leader in that regard. Because like you said, it starts with that. And nothing worth having is easily gotten. You've got to work to get it. And it's a good, good model for that. You bring in a Greg Van Roten who was a great addition. He's available. He's a grizzled veteran. He knows what he's doing. You've got an Alex Bars, a Dylan Parman. I'm curious about the dynamic because I think this is tells a lot about the character of your room. Yep, two of those guys are back as starters, but everybody's competing, and yet they're helping each other. I was watching Alex. Who obviously, if, if Greg gets in the starting lineup, he could very well unseat Alex. I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying that would be somebody possible. And here's Alex is showing him how to do something. You can't build that kind of camaraderie, can you? It just has to happen naturally. I think you have to have a culture already in the room, which which existed already. I mean, mm-hmm. they were a tight knit group of guys. Um, you know, there is that. You, you sometimes you look at it in the NFL. You can't be ignorant to it about you know the jobs are at stake here. It's not like college where there's guaranteed five years and you know no matter what. Um, two minutes, guys. But nevertheless, it's a great group of guys that, that embrace the, the job of, of the room first, and they put the team first, which is something you want to try to achieve. It's one of Coach McDaniel's, is, you know, you know, poor beliefs. So put the team first, and they're willing to do that. And the fact that they're willing to help one another and teach one another and throw out an idea. And when we close the door, that's a part of our room. As far as hey, listen, we'll, 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 you know, no, there's no bad ideas. Let's see. Oh, okay, hey, I've tried it like this. I've worked with that type of player, and you know, they're they're willing to do that because they are first of all. Most good and decent men. Awesome, thank you. Hmm?